Hey everyone, this is Melissa, and I'm the talkative introvert. All right, welcome back to the podcast, everybody. Hi. I'm joined again by Miss Bailey. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi. All right. Thanks for having me. Of course. You've as, been on like as how many times? Usual. How many times? Yeah. I don't know. It's been a handful. Yeah, I'd say a handful. I've loved every second of it. Yeah? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so glad we don't do video. Oh, God. I could never. Yeah, no. My triple chins would not allow. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to this lady, and um, she's like one of the people I'm going to, that's going to be a guest on the show. Mm. And she has her podcast too. And she's like, oh, I love using, I think it's called like Streamcaster or something. Mm-mm. Um, she's like, no. it's perfect if you're doing video. And I was like, oh, no, I don't do video. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. No, thank you. You're like, <laughs> but, no. I was like, I'll note it down in case it <laughs> you know, may be in the future. But I don't foresee that at all. Oh, uh, hit him with the classic. I'll take that into consideration. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, my God. So, what are we talking about? I feel like what we're talking about today, it's not controversial, is it? It's controversial maybe to some people. Yeah, people who are get butt hurt really easily. <laughs> AK, no, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, today we're going to talk about being child-free. And not wanting children. So that's why I'm, I'm saying it's kind of controversial. Because some people can't fathom the thought of not having children. Mm-hmm. And so... Can't yeah. relate. Yeah, seriously, <laughs> cannot relate. <clears throat> I feel like... Like, I don't know. I'm 30. I would know if I want kids by now. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Like, I'm old enough to know by now. Mm-hmm. Okay, Bailey. Oh, God. Tell me. What? Why do you not want children? Because I hate them. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I am not a child hater. Um, I love children. I think, you know, they are literally our future and it is very important to take care of them and support them. I don't want children for a lot of reasons. And for honestly, most of my life, like I really believed that I wanted kids and I would be a good mom. I mean, I know I'd be a good mom if I did have kids, but you know that my kids would just be so blessed to, you know, to have me as mom. <laughs> um, but the older I get, like, it's not really about the kids when it comes to me not wanting to have kids. It's about mm-hmm. me. And it's like, like what it would do to me. And I'm just quite frankly, too mentally unstable to be a parent and to yeah. be that constant support for them when I can, when I have, when there are times where I find a, it, like there are times I can't support myself and I can't be there for myself. Mm-hmm. So how am I going to do that for somebody else? 24 seven. Um, also, I just my life is so perfect and un un unproblematic, and mm-hmm. it's so like calm and and it's just my life is just one thousand percent about me, and I just can't even imagine my life being any other way. Yeah, I just like when I like I was sick a couple weeks ago, and I like when I'm sick, I am the biggest <laughs> baby ever. Yeah. But I literally was laying on the couch, like, just miserable, and the thought came to me, what if I had a kid, and there was a fucking kid running around right now, like, like, pawing at me and constantly needing attention and, like, needing me to, like, stimulate them and play with them, like, I would be miserable. More miserable than I was because I was sick and not feeling good. Yeah. But, you know, it's just, it's just not... It just would not make me happy, truly. It would not make me happy to constantly have to put another person first. Like, the only person I'm interested in putting first is myself. And, yeah, so that's really it. And then also just the world right now. It's just not – it is not a good idea to bring more people into this world, plain and simple. It's 
just without like being too harsh or getting, you know, into yeah, it. But, really into it. Yeah. Um, I, I definitely, I do not want to say anything disrespectful towards anybody. Like if you, if parents out there, like that is hands down the hardest job. Mm-hmm. Um, you will not find anything more challenging than trying to raise a kid, a human being, a human being and raise them to have morals and values and standards and all the things that we need to be good people. Um, and I commend you if you are a parent, it's just mm-hmm. for me, like I, that is just, no, it's not my thing. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Not everyone needs to be a parent. No. And there are so many people who are parents who shouldn't be. And the, who gets the brunt of that? Who gets the, who, who reaps the trauma of that is the kid who didn't yeah. ask to be born in the first place. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I don't want to be again, like, <clears throat> I don't want to come off disrespectful. Um, that like, that's something I'm trying to be very, I'm one, I'm going to be very cautious and choosing yeah. my words for the next hour. Cause we're not children haters no. and we don't hate parents. It's just that it's not the lifestyle for us. I kind of hate irresponsible parents. Oh, well, everyone hates them. Like parents who deliberately intentionally put their children in unsafe situations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, I could give like a hundred examples. Oh yeah, for sure. But, um, yeah, no, no hate to parents, no hate to children. Yeah. Like mad respect for all the good parents out there. It's a hard job. And if you're not a good parent, (laughs) what are you going to say? I'll keep that to myself. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Oh, okay. I'm just kidding. I will find you. And I will lecture you. <laughs> okay. I was like, uh. Where is this going to go? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh no. What about you? So for me, like, it's just, I have zero desire to be a mom. You know, like, I feel like if you're going to be a parent, you have to want to be a parent. Like, I know there's a lot of people who feel pressured, feel obligated. Like, that's the next step in adulthood is becoming a parent. Or men who are forced to be parents. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that is just the one of the worst things that you could do to another person is force them into parenthood Mm -hmm. with, like, getting pregnant without their consent. Yeah. Like, 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 I've heard stories of women. So many stories. Like purposely getting off their birth control to get them pregnant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's just awful. And who is nobody thinking about the kid? Yeah. No one even gives a second thought about the human being. That's going to be a product of your Mm -hmm. manipulation. Yeah. Anyway. (laughs) Um, Yeah. So yeah, I just don't have a desire. Mm -hmm. Like I, it doesn't, it doesn't cross my mind. It doesn't, uh, like, it doesn't bring me joy to think about it, of being pregnant or being Mm-mm. a mom or having a baby. Hell to the no. Yeah. Like, I, there, it, there was a moment, though. There was a moment after my brother had his first kid, um, because his first kid, like, majority of the kids in our family were accidents. You know, they were unplanned. <laughs> like, it was just like, surprise. Um, but my brothers was actually planned. Like, they wanted to have kids. It was like... Um, they want to be parents and that's great. And that's like how it should be. Like you should want to be a parent. Mm -hmm. And so when he had his kid and now he's on kid number two, um, I thought like, I was just thinking back to my childhood and how much I had fun with our cousins. Well, technically they're nieces and nephews, but they're the same (laughs) age as us. So I just call them. That's a story for a different day. (laughs) Yeah. That's a whole, whole thing with my dad. Um, yeah, so I was like, I loved that. I loved our, like, family gatherings where the kids got together. And so with these kids, like, I felt like, I don't know. I had, like, a tiny, tiny glimpse of, like, maybe I should have kids for these kids. Uh-oh. But that's, like, not a Uh-oh. good reason to have kids. And how long did that thought last in your mind? Like a day. <laughs> I'm shocked. I thought you were going to say like three minutes. Oh, no. I think it was just like the, 
it was just like all the, you know, happy chemicals in your brain because it happened probably like right after I met the baby. Like I met her at the hospital Mm -hmm. and luckily she got, she was born before the pandemic. So we got to like actually go to the hospital and see her and, um, it was just a very precious moment. And we do that too with like Brandon's family. Like we went to go see, you know, his sister's kids when they were born. And it, it does give you like that happy chemicals, mm-hmm. like seeing a newborn baby. Yeah. But that's just a moment in time. Right. You know, like that's not forever. And kind of um, piggybacking off of like what you were saying earlier about like how it's going to change your life. And, Brandy and I worked really hard for the life that we have now. You know, we didn't ask for help. We worked really hard. We paid for everything that we have. Yeah. We paid for our house. You know, we didn't get into crazy, like we didn't get like crazy personal loans or ask people for money. So we worked really hard for our lifestyle. And children would ruin that. <clears throat> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, no, that's, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But like... You know, we didn't have the ideal childhood either. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like our lives were just kind of full of struggles up until this point. Mm -hmm. And to, I don't want to say ruin that because it's such a strong. Yeah, it's a strong word. But like, I'm just very happy with what we have right now. And having a kid would disrupt that. And I just feel like I work so hard for it. And you guys literally have the life. You guys are stress free, fr- stress free. You guys literally literally have the life that you've always wanted since mm-hmm. you guys were kids. No drama, stress free, unproblematic, like yeah, and we could do blissful. Yeah, we quiet, could do whatever we calm. Want. Yeah. <laughs> Cuz we do have a dog and our life does revolve around our dog. But like he's easy. He's a know? dog. Like yeah. he can't talk back. You can leave him at home without a babysitter. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's, I don't know. It's just so much easier. And like, I don't want to, I don't want to ruin that. I don't want to disrupt that. Mm-hmm. And yeah, life is just good right now. And if we did have a kid right now, we would have to have a bigger house. Because we do have a pretty small house. Like, we're not rich by any means. Um But we would, yeah, that would put us in a financial burden because we would have to have a bigger house. We would have to have a room for the kid. We would have to adjust everything. Like, I um, I have our budget. Like, I have a spreadsheet like you do. And I have our monthly budget. It's the only way to live, man. I need to know. Yeah. I don't know how people can go without knowing, without knowing what their budget is for the month. Either they're really reckless or they just have a lot of money and they don't need to check their account. It's one or the other. Because it's like, I got to know. Like, I need to make sure I've got money in the account. Dude, I really think there are people out there who literally just keep swiping their debit card until it declines. Oh, I'm sure. Can you imagine the anarchy? The (laughs) chaos? I mean, oh my god. Like, I check my bank account almost every single time before Mm -hmm. I have to spend money. Yeah. Because I wait until it goes through. Because I know, like, Target... Target sucks at their um, transactions. They take, like, days before it gets taken out of your account. Your debit account? Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's how it is for you, but... Mine literally that... shows up right away. Really? Yeah, dude. I use the Target debit card, though, because you get 5% off. Oh, yeah, no, I don't do that. That takes forever. But, like, yeah, if you just use your regular card, like, it shows up, like, by the time you get home. It's, like, there instantly. Yeah. That's why I was confused. But, oh, you have the Target debit card. Yeah. So it's hooked up to your checking or your bank account. So it's not a credit card, right? Right. Okay, gotcha. I don't know how they make money off of that, but, yeah. Dude, I can't, like, um, I already spend too much money at Target. I can't encourage it. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, so it would just be a financial burden. Plus, I don't have a desire. Like, I, my womb is not burning. No. When I see a newborn baby, it's cute. And, like, I'm happy for them. But then it starts crying. <laughs> then I give it back. Exactly. I also, I don't know how to be around kids. 
Do you have that? You don't have that problem. No. You're good with kids. I can be. Yeah. Yeah, I am. You're good with kids. I am. Yeah. Honestly, when we went to um, your sister-in-law's house and and I was on the trampoline with her two kids, Mm -hmm. it was so much fun. They loved it. I know. It was fun. I am a big kid. That's why I can't have kids. (laughs) Like, I'm an only child. Yeah. But I don't. Like, I want to have a good relationship with my nieces and nephews, but I don't know how to be a kid. Like, I wasn't really a kid when I was a kid. Um, You know, in the infamous, infamous words of Zoe Rowe, people are always asking, when are you getting married? When are you having kids? Never. I plan on being the single, rich, bad bitch forever. Oh, I've seen that. Oh, my God. Like, oh, that Rowe. That is my motto that I live by. Like, yeah, no, I will be the, well, I, I don't, I'm never going to have any nieces and nephews because my sister like doesn't want kids either. Oh, she doesn't? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so, but like, obviously my friends have kids. So, um, yeah, I just, I'm going to be the cool, fun aunt. Mm-hmm. I can't wait till Casey has kids. See, Casey's a good example of someone who should be a parent. Oh my God. Casey's going to be such a good mom. Yeah. She's so energetic. She'll yeah. be able to keep up with them. She's literally an energizer bunny. She never runs out of energy. Yeah, it's she can actually run after kids. I hate when kids start running. <laughs> I'm like, man, now I gotta run. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. Oh my god. I had to like do that with Sovi when we went to the rose garden. Because you're not allowed to pick the roses, obviously. You know, it's the rose garden. So I'm like the whole time just like running and swatting her hand, like, don't touch it, don't touch it. That is the opposite of a cool, fun aunt, just so you know. There's thorns. I'm not going to let her touch the roses. We're painting the roses red. Off with their heads. I've been quoting Alice in Wonderland a lot lately. Did you watch it recently? No. Oh, okay. It just came to me. Hmm. Um. So has your... So tell me about, like... The conversations that have happened over the years from the time where you were like maybe in your early 20s and you had, you and Brandon have obviously been together for like five, six years at this point. Like, tell me about the, the, how the conversation, conversation and the questions have changed from your parents, from your family regarding you having kids. Okay. So it's definitely changed a lot because when I was in high school, I did want kids. Me too. I wanted that pregnant belly. Me too. I, yeah, I was Why like, did we ever want that? I don't know, but I wanted the belly. I wanted to touch it. I wanted like to feel the little kicks in, you know, punches. Okay, I'm can we like skip the details? I'm like physically getting nauseous <laughs> right now. Okay. But so it was just kind of like, you know, my parents expected me to be a mom at some point uh-huh. because that was just Again, that's just the norm. Society is yeah, that's society's the, normal. I'm using quotes here. Air that's quotes. the final step to becoming an adult. Right. Right. Um, I think that's why I always say, like, I don't feel like an adult. Like, I never feel like I'm an adult. Like, when I turned 30, I didn't really feel like I was turning 30. But I think it's because, like, my adult stage ended and I, there's nothing more. Because I'm not going to have kids, mm-hmm. you know? Anyway, so, yeah. So, in high school... I wanted kids. I wanted to be a mom, get married, have that nuclear family. I wanted a son and a daughter. The, the what family? Nuclear family. The fuck does that mean? A mom, dad, a son and daughter. Nuclear? It's like a term from the 50s or something. Oh, interesting. I've never heard of that before. I think it's called nuclear. Very I'm pretty cool. sure. Okay. Um, yeah. So I wanted that just basic, like what my parents had. Mm-hmm. Well, if you mind, it's my dad's first family. If you, <laughs> they didn't exist. <laughs> Like, oh, my yeah. family was the perfect family. Mom, dad, brother, sister. Yeah. You know? Um, so that was just whatever. But as I got older, like, as I matured and mm-hmm. really, like, figured out who I am mm-hmm. and what I actually like, I was like, I don't even want kids. I even, um, we even talked about, like, not getting married because marriage is, like... <laughs> I think my thought process before was, like, marriage is kind of, it's just a personal thing between you and your partner Mm -hmm. that you determine, like, you're going to stay together forever. 
Um, and I didn't understand the point of it, like being a government thing Mm -hmm. where you have to like sign a paper and pay for a marriage certificate. Mm -hmm. And it's just very structured and very like, I don't know. And I didn't like the idea that anybody can get married. Like it's so, you could literally go through a drive through and get married but it's so hard and so expensive to get divorced, mm-hmm. you know? And like our parents, you know, his parents are divorced. My parents, I always say like they love each other, but they're not in love. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't have a good um, picture of what a good marriage was. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't even want that. Didn't really care for the kids. And then it wasn't, but we never told anyone that. That you guys didn't want to. Get married or have kids. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We didn't... I mean, we're married now, but... And I don't regret marrying him because I don't plan to be with anybody else. Um, And if we did break up, like, I think that's it. Like, I'm just going to be single for the rest of my life. Yeah. Dating sucks. Yeah. I've heard. (laughs) (laughs) (sighs) But it wasn't like... I never. We never brought it up, the whole kid thing, Mm -hmm. because we were still young and I was still in college and it took me longer to graduate than, you know, the typical person. Cause just like a bunch of stuff happened. And, um, and then I definitely did not want to bring it up because of this weird, like, I think it was Louie didn't want to have kids, but she was still young at the time. Yeah. You know, cause she's like, what, three years younger than us. Mm-hmm. Uh, and her mom did not like that. She was not happy about it. She didn't like it. And because of that one interaction, <laughs> you learned. I was like, well, I'm not going to tell her I don't want kids. Because <laughs> oh. the conversation, it didn't really get brought up until we got married. Mm-hmm. You know, because. Wait, people- pause. Sorry. Hold on. What? Go back. So, what happened between Louie and her mom? Well, her mom was just upset and she's like, well, you're still young. Mm-hmm. You know, you got time to think about it. Um, she thought it was, like, selfish of her. Like, that's a very common thing. Yeah. A lot of people say, like, if you don't have kids, you're selfish. When actually it's the opposite. Yeah, I think it's the opposite. We'll get into that later. We'll get, we'll get yeah, into yeah. We'll, we'll, um, yeah. But yeah, it was just not a good interaction. I don't want to get too much into it. Because I don't want to, like, you know, blast them. It's okay. You can tell me off. Yeah, off I'll mic. tell you off. Offline. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll parking lot this conversation. Oh, love that. Do you use that parking lots? I haven't yet, but I don't hardly talk to anyone, so. Okay. Yeah, that's what we use in meetings. So if we go <laughs> off topic, like, let's parking lot that. Put let's that topic on the that. parking lot. Mm-hmm. Um. So, yeah, so that wasn't a good interaction. And then that was my, like, okay, I'm not going to tell her that I'm not going to have kids. Right. But no one asked us because, again, our families, you know, they're Filipino. They're very, like, you know, Catholic in the Philippines, very religious. So you don't have kids before marriage anyways. Right. It's not the expectation, even though a lot of people in our family have. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And so it didn't really get brought up until after we got married. Yeah. And then that's when we were like, okay, well, now we have to be honest and be like, yeah, we're not having kids. (laughs) And that was really hard because a lot of people are like, oh, they're just going to change their minds. Like, oh, it's still early. Like, they have time to have kids, you know? Like, And they were saying this after you guys got married? Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> and we probably talked about it briefly before we got married. Because we only got married, like, what, two years ago? Three years ago? Four years ago. You guys got married in 2018. No, 2019. Oh. 20- so three years ago. Because it's yeah. 2022. Yeah. Okay. Three years ago. Wow. You guys have been married for three years. Yeah. Crazy. And we've been together 15, 15. years. <laughs> yeah. You know, honestly, I don't think you guys have a good chance of making it. <laughs> <It's> t- <laughs> oh my God. Can you imagine? You're like married for five years and get a divorce after being yeah. together for 18 years. <laughs> yeah. God. I feel like that's more common with people who get married at like a really young age after not knowing each other. And then they're together for, like, 30 years, and they're like, yeah, no, this doesn't work for me I don't know, it's kind of weird, because, like, I know people who get married after knowing each other for, like, a year, Mm -hmm. and then it worked out, and then people who got married after, like, five years, and then it didn't work out. Yeah. So, it's kind of just... It's crapshoot either way. Yeah. Um, Okay, so, 
they were asking after you guys got married and what was like your guys' response? And was it always like in a public, I'm sure, public setting where like other people were there? It wasn't like a private one-on-one conversation? No, we don't have private one-on-one conversations. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> well, I mean, I know that, but not everybody else does. So I'm just trying to paint no, a picture. No, it's always like at a family event. It's always like, you're like, when are you guys going to have kids? You know, like the aunties would come around or like, you know, grandparents or whatever. Well, I don't have any grandparents. Um, but just, like, relatives would be like, oh, when are you going to have kids? Like, you guys are married now. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like... You guys can start having sex now. Yeah. <laughs> Shh. No, just kidding. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> I don't know if people generally think... Because, you know, we've been, we lived together since we were 18. Do you think people actually thought we would wait until... I mean, I mean, not to be like, not to sound like disrespectful or anything, but in your family, that would not surprise me if people thought that. <laughs> Maybe some, my mom. Some people, some sort like certain people. Yeah, certain family. like super religious, the true Catholics, the elders. Yeah, the elders probably. <laughs> um, but I've gotten, I've gotten all the comments like you're, you just don't know yet, or just wait, or you're gonna change your mind later, or you're selfish, or you're, like, you know, I've got- You don't know, you don't know real love until you have a child. Yeah, they're like, we'll just have one, and it'll change your mind, or it'll change your perspective in life. And I'm like, that's a terrible advice. (laughs) Don't ever tell someone to just have one to see how it's like. Like, there's no undo. Yeah. You, you can't, can't return it. You can't take. You can't drop it off at the shelter if it's yeah, not working out. Yeah, there's no out. ninety days like <laughs> ninety day return, return policy. policy. <laughs> um, so, has anybody like outside of your family ever asked these questions or made these comments to you about not having kids? Like maybe coworkers, friends, parents of friends. Um, coworkers, I've they're never negative, mm-hmm. but I do get like the oh, you'll probably change your mind later. I don't know if that's not really, that's kind of, I don't want to say that's negative. I don't want to say that's like rude, but it's also kind of like borderline like inappropriate. It. Very yeah. dismissive. It's very dismissive. Very dismissive, borderline inappropriate, I would say. But like the people who do understand are like cousins, nieces and nephews and um, people in my generation. They're like, that's cool. Like, Whatever. You know? So you sometimes coworkers, um, coworkers, um, yeah, people outside our family, like friends, would ask, but my friends don't care. <laughs> obviously, your friends know. Well, I don't think any of my friends even want kids. Like, I don't, I don't know if me and Shan want kids. I don't think they do. Does Mia? I think she teeters. But I know Shannon doesn't. I think she's said that to me before. Mm-hmm. You don't. <laughs> so I think the only people in my friend group is Casey. What about Austin? Oh, you know, I never asked him. Austin, slide in those DMs. Yeah, let us know. Do you want to be a daddy? What about Louie? Does she? St- I thought she changed her mind. Well, I know Fabian does. Mm, okay. So, so she has changed her mind. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, but she used to not want to. And I don't know if that situation would... I mean, we can always ask her. I don't know if that situation would be different if her husband didn't want to. You know? Well, we can ask her. But I think that's just normal for our generation, though. To change your mind when you get married? No, that millennials don't want kids. Oh, yeah. I know there's so many, like, articles and studies that they've done. Like, we, like millennials can't afford to. Period. Like... Well, a lot of them... Because I, I, sent, I sent you that article. Mm-hmm. And... A lot of them just don't want to. Mm-hmm. So it's not like, yeah, we can't afford them. Sure. Because kids are freaking expensive. But a lot of them just don't want to. Yeah. Like, I don't know what shifted or what changed with our generation. It's all the childhood trauma. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Like, I think a lot of, like, I think millennials were the first generation to truly acknowledge childhood trauma and to want to work through that like mental health. as a collective yes yeah. like mental health is a huge topic of discussion as it should be as it should have been you know and mm-hmm. um and when you're unpacking your childhood trauma like that doesn't make you want to have kids yeah. if you had a fucked up childhood and in the past like people had kids because they needed workers on the farm or like 
like, there was a use for kids. Like, you know, 150 years ago. Yeah. But now, like, you have kids because you just want kids. Or because you're bored. <laughs> sure. Because um, people used to have... Oh, it's kind of like marriages. Like, mar- marrying someone because you love them is a kind of a new thing, mm-hmm. right? Like, before, it's, it's transactional. Right. There's a reason for it. It right. served a purpose. But now it's like, it's just because of love or because of happiness or whatever. Mm-hmm. So now people are finally like, I don't have to have a kid. You know? I can do whatever I want. Yeah. I mean, I think it's more like... I think that thinking is now more of a societal way of thinking. I don't have to do what I don't want to do. I don't have to follow what other people tell me I should do. I can Mm -hmm. do what I want to do. What makes sense for me. What makes me happy. Mm -hmm. I can put myself first. Yeah. And that is, like, amazing. Yeah. Everyone should think like that, in my opinion. Yeah. Everyone... They just, they're not supposed to be parents, but they've had that obligation to be one. Yeah. Either their family, friends, community puts pressure on them. They feel pressure from society in general. Um, like they put pressure on themselves maybe, Mm -hmm. um, or they're trying to get somebody to be part of their life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I've told you this, um, but my dad is a perfect example of that. Mm-hmm. My dad was not meant to be a dad. You know, and, uh, I don't think my dad is like necessarily a bad person, but um, he did have kids with his first family. And the first kid, he was just really young too. Mm-hmm. He was like 17 or 18 at the time. So he's like a teen parent. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, he's really yeah. They're, Jesus, that's why my nieces and nephews are are, are the same age. Yeah, because my uh, or they're older. Because my so my dad was like either seventeen or eighteen when he had my sister, and then that my sister had her first kid at sixteen, uh, and then I think either I think her daughter had her first kid at like eighteen or something like that. So my dad was like a really young grandpa. <laughs> I think he was a he was his grandpa by the time he was in his thirties. Yeah. That's so crazy. Right? Because sixteen plus seventeen. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah, man. But yeah, my dad my dad was always when he was younger, he was like the life of the party. He was a bachelor. Mm-hmm. Um and he loved going out, doing that kind of stuff. And he also I mean this is kind of the bad part, but he also loves women. Loved women. Can you blame them? Yeah. <laughs> and I um, love women. I won't get into that. I don't want to like upset <laughs> family. I don't think I. I don't think my family listens. But <laughs> if they do, I won't get into. I mean, stories. clearly after dinner that one time. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So my dad, my dad was not meant to be tied down Mm -hmm. if you will you Mm -hmm. know he probably shouldn't have had he's a rambler you know he's a free person he's a free spirit he cannot be tied down tying him down is like trying to tie down smoke Mm -hmm. it's not gonna happen yeah except your mom kind of did it yeah my mom tamed him (laughs) whipped him (laughs) whipped him into shape Uh, (laughs) and yeah but he i think he Cause I did like do an interview for school. Mm -hmm. So in college, I, you know, have a degree in family studies. So I had to do like an interview of young adult, middle age adult and older adult just to, um, because you know, everyone lumps adulthood into this one bucket, but there's different stages of adulthood. Mm -hmm. And he said like one of his biggest regrets is that he wasn't more of a family guy. Hmm. Um, and I think what he meant by that is that he he couldn't fit the role as, like, the dad, mm-hmm. you know? Because it just wasn't him. That's right. not his personality. Yeah. Um, and I think he regretted it because he doesn't have a good relationship with his kids. Mm-hmm. And again, like, that's his choice. But also, like, he would have to change who he is as a person. Right. And so I don't think... Like, he just shouldn't have been a dad, you know? Mm-hmm. He didn't understand why we got upset when we did. He didn't understand, like, 
he didn't understand how to be around kids. Mm -hmm. He didn't get why it wasn't okay to not want to go to my graduation or why it wasn't okay to not go to the like ceremonies. Like, you know, when you're a little kid, you get like, you know, Perfect attendance award or... Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, like eighth grade graduation, kindergarten graduation. Yeah, yeah, stuff like that. And so my dad didn't really have... He didn't really care about those things, but he was the stay-at-home dad because my mom had to work. Mm-hmm. But my mom's like the complete... Op- my mom was meant to be a mom, for sure. She's a perfect example of someone who, who should be a parent because she was like our cheerleader. She was there... Like, if she could have been, she would have swapped roles with my dad, for sure. Hmm. But my dad was, like, on disability. That's, like, a whole other story. Uh, so my dad couldn't work, so he got to stay home, and then my mom had to work. And But it definitely should have been the other way around. But, yeah, he didn't go to our ceremonies, and he didn't really, like, he didn't understand, like, why it was important to go to graduation. Like, he didn't go to my college one, you know, because you went. Um, he didn't go to that. Um, my high school one, you know, we had, what is it? We were capped out because we were at the quad. So we only had like certain tickets. And my brother, so th- because my family is big, I think there was somebody in our family that couldn't go. And my dad's like, oh, yeah, my ticket. And he didn't understand why that hurt me that he said that, you yeah. know? And just like stuff like that. Like he doesn't get how to be a parent to a kid. And do you think that you kind of took the brunt of that and, like, that affected you? I mean, it obviously affected you as a kid and in the moment. Does it something that still affects you today? Um, I think that, like, as I'm getting older, I'm less and less angry at my dad. Mm -hmm. I used to hate my dad. Like, I used to hate every aspect. Like, just looking at him or just even the thought of him would make me really upset or mad. Um, because like he didn't put in that effort and I'm so used to like, like other people's dads, you know? Yeah. And I wanted my dad to be more like their dad, Mm -hmm. but as I'm getting older, like I get it now because we're pretty similar. Like there's some good, some bad stuff, but you know, I am his daughter. Of course I'm going to have some similarities to him. Totally. And I think I got that gene if that's genetic of not wanting kids. You know? Yeah, for sure. And I don't, yeah, I don't know. So, like, as I'm getting older, like, I, I get who he is now. I get his personality because mm-hmm. I am kind of similar to him. Obviously, I'm not a womanizer. And, womanizer, womanizer. But, you know, other aspects of him. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the good ones. So, I'm trying to be less angry at him. Yeah. And it is hard, obviously. Like, I still think about some stuff that he did and but I can see, like, why he didn't understand or why he doesn't get it, that, why that made him a bad dad. Mm. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. How about you? <laughs> um, what, like, my dad? My parents? Yeah. Like, what was your, like, relationship like with your parents? Um, great. You know? Yeah. And so my dad died when I was 10, and that really sucked because I was definitely way more connected to him and I had a stronger relationship with my dad because it was kind of the same. So my dad was, um, he had a heart condition, so he couldn't work. Yeah. So he was stay at home dad, but he was like all about it. Like, um, opposite of your dad in that way. Yeah. Um, so my dad like was always cooking, cleaning, you know, getting me ready for school, doing my hair. Like, um, when I was really little would like give me baths and like do all of that stuff. And so, Um, it was amazing, like to have such an incredible parent and my mom is equally as great. You know, she worked tirelessly to support our family, family of five. And, Mm -hmm. um, we had a beautiful home and, and my mom, like, even when she wasn't working and she wasn't home, like best mom ever, like my mom, um, like she hand sewn my first Irish dance costume that I still have today in my closet, you know, like stuff like that, like really special. And like, like both of my parents were just so biggest cheerleaders of all three of us kids and like our biggest supporters and like, um, loved us so much. And like, you know, we had, we have such a beautiful family had, I'm going to say had. Mm -hmm. So after my dad died, 
um, when I was 10, unfortunately, like it changed a lot and it wasn't my mom's fault. Um, but mental illness, you know, like they're like for a whole year after my dad died, my mom like didn't get out of bed and like we got evicted because she stopped working, stopped mm-hmm. showing up for work and like stopped paying the bills and stuff. And like, I would come home from school and like the lights wouldn't be on because they shut off the electricity type of thing. Mm-hmm. And then just like everything completely did a 180 after my dad died. Um, again, no fault of my mom's, like, it's just mental illness, just, you know, it sucks. And so, um, but yeah, like definitely like my parents always wanted to be parents. They always wanted to have kids. Um, my dad had his first child before him and my mom met with his first, um, I don't know if him, if they got married, I don't know if they were married. I want to say no, but they had a baby, my brother, um, and my brother's 15 years older than me. And, um, so he was born in like the mid seventies, maybe late seventies. Um, and so I, um, oh, so what am I trying to say? He, it wasn't like, it wasn't really like a common thing only because they didn't really, like look for it but my brother had um cerebral palsy and he was paraplegic so like when he was about three that's when they started noticing that he wasn't Mm -hmm. develop developing correctly because he wasn't really talking he had a hard Mm -hmm. time walking like that type of thing so basically i think when he was maybe around six seven and his um cerebral palsy started to become like very advanced Um, and it was very clear that he was going to need round the clock care. Um, he could not care for himself in any way, shape or form. Mm -hmm. His mom actually like abandoned the family and it was just him, my brother and my dad. And my dad became a single parent at like in his mid twenties. Yeah. And, but honestly, I don't know. I mean, I know he would have wanted, you know, my brother's mom to be part of more part of his life. And I don't think she came back around until he was like in his early Mm twenties. So he missed, she missed his whole childhood and adolescence, but that's neither here nor there. Um, but I think my dad, like really, I know my dad loved being a parent to my brother. And so similarly with my mom, she had my sister before her and my dad got together. Mm -hmm. So I'm the only parent, or I'm the only child of my parents. Um, my siblings are half siblings, but that doesn't really matter. Like we're still, you know, family. And so, um, and so like I was an accident. I wasn't like necessarily planned, but I do know that they were both very, very excited. Yeah. Yeah. And they actually ended up getting married before they even knew my mom was pregnant. Oh. Yeah, so they just, you know, and my parents had just such a beautiful, beautiful relationship. They were married for 11 years before my dad passed. Um, and, you know, that was my mom's great love mm-hmm. and um, really shaped her and made her who she is today. So, but unfortunately, after my dad died, like that, you know, things changed and my mom just really struggled with her mental health. But um, but once she kind of like got a grip on it, which wasn't until like ba- basically like my mid twenties, um, then she came back around to being the mom that I knew when I was a kid before my dad died, just being like number one cheerleader, supportive, so loving, so caring, like just so fun and just like always wanting to hang out and stuff like that. So yeah. I love my mom very, very much. And I love my dad very much. And I miss him very much every day. So, yeah. I love that, though. I love when parents, um, like, when they're your, like, number one supporter. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, my mom is a huge cheerleader. (laughs) Like. I love your mom. She. She's the best. She is. Like, she. So, uh, my brother. Brandon and our nephew had abandoned high school. Do you remember that? <laughs> of course. How could oh I forget? God. They had a two pager in the yearbook. Yeah, they did. Oh my God. What was um, their band name again? Uh, kicked off curfew. That's right. And they spelled curfew wrong. <laughs> you know, 
Just so, so them. Uh, Wait, intentionally or? They say it's intentionally. It wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they just spelled it wrong. Did they spell it C-U-R? I think, how do you spell curfew? Fuck if I know. I think curfew is like C-U-R-F-U-E. Oh, they did C-E-R? But they did, no, F-E-W. Few. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the acronym spells cock. K-O-C. Mm. Mm-hmm. Clubba. Wait, um, kicked? Kicked off curfew. That doesn't spell cock. K-O-C. I mean, it doesn't spell like actual cock, but like, oh. what the acronym sounds like. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Uh, their music video is still on YouTube if you guys want to check that out. I we are watching that immediately I have after to look this. For it, but yeah. Um, so anyways, so yeah, my mom went to every show. <gasps> I didn't know that. Yeah, she went to every show. At least the one she could make, you know? That is so cool. It's just so funny because, like, you know, it's a high school garage band, and we they played at, like... She'd go to, like, the boardwalk? They didn't have enough songs for the boardwalk. Oh. So the boardwalk actually reached out to them to play. Oh. But you have to have a certain number of songs to have a full set. Uh, and they didn't. Well, let's just write some more songs. Right? Like, Hello? Come on. Get it Hello. together, boys. <laughs> so they didn't have enough. But Boardwalk's gone now. Did you know? <gasps> Shut up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's gone now. What? I think it was like, I think the pandemic like just crushed them. If I remember correctly, I don't remember. I might have to do a drive-by later today. Boardwalk, Orangeville. Or is it still there? Nope, permanently closed. Oh! Yeah, dude. It's Google official. So sad. That is sad. Because they they didn't play just, you know, high school bands, obviously. They had, like, actual bands go out there. The pack. It was just, like, an iconic place. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you were a teenager in... In in Sac... Not really Sacramento, like... Outskirts of Sacramento. Yeah. Sacramento suburbs. suburbs. (laughs) Um, Northern Sacramento. You would. You knew the boardwalk. You knew the boardwalk, baby. Yeah. So many makeout sessions there. <laughs> I was in it. I was hit on by so many over uh, inappropriate men. Oh God. Maybe I should have. <laughs> Just kidding. It's your like, it's your old school, like, what do you call those? Venues. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, That's really cute. But yeah, she wants all of them. She, like, was a big supporter, you know, if they needed money for stuff. Like, my mom, yeah, she was a big supporter. Went to every single one. I'm pretty sure she went to every single one. I bet that made them, I I bet that made them all feel so good. Yeah, because my sister didn't even attend. Bitch. I don't remember, I honestly don't remember attending any of them. Um, okay. (laughs) Bitch. (laughs) Um... (laughs) God bless her. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> okay. Anyways. Um, so I also wanted to talk about like, how do we respond to people when they are constantly asking us about kids? <laughs> um, well, I don't know if I'm a good person to ask because I'm kind of like direct and most people think directness <laughs> is rude. But I just completely shut people down. And I really don't even give a second thought to, like, how that would make someone feel. Because, like, don't ask questions you don't want the answers to. Yeah. So I'm trying to think of, I guess, the selfish thing. That's the one that people get all the time. Like, when they ask, they tell you that you're selfish for not wanting kids. First of all, rude. You know? Like... I guess it depends on who you're talking to, but if someone says that, you know. Like, Calling anyone selfish for any reason is pretty rude. Yeah. Like, I would just, I would just straight up tell them, like, that's kind of rude. Like, that's not my thought process of it. And I don't understand the argument either that it's selfish. Um, And considering the state of the world, not only with, like like really bad stuff but even just looking at like sustainability and like the current health of the planet like having kids is what is selfish is because like economically and 
stuff like that. Like you shouldn't, we shouldn't be adding to the population period. Like the world is not good right now. And Mm -hmm. so that's selfish is to want to bring somebody into this dumpster fire of a world. Well, even if you take all those away, even if we live in a utopia, the act of having a kid is, it is selfish because it you're doing it for yourself and no one else. You want to have a carbon copy of yourself. Yeah. Like now I am not referring to at all adopting. Yeah. Cause adopting those are kids that are already here. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm also not saying like don't have kids or like you're a bad person to want kids. Yeah. No, not saying that at all. I'm just saying the act of having a kid that's of your own choosing. Like that's, to benefit you. Yeah. Because that's something you want to do. Yeah, which it's something it's, you want to do. Which in itself is selfish. Yeah, but that, not necessarily bad. No. It's just... But it's not okay. It's not cool to tell somebody that... Call somebody else selfish for not wanting to have kids. Yeah, I think that... It doesn't make sense. Like, it, I just don't understand the argument. Like, I guess people are arguing, like, because you're living your life for yourself. But wanting kids is living life for yourself because that's the lifestyle you want. If somebody tells you that you're selfish for not wanting to have kids, another good thing to say is, like, nobody wants to have parents who don't want them. Exactly. Because if you have a parent who didn't want to, who didn't want to have kids, you know it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, it's obvious. Kids aren't dumb. Exactly. Just like you. Yeah. So... And that's really hurtful to live with. Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't think, I don't think you should just have kids just to have kids because people want you to have kids or that's like the societal norm. Another thing you could say is like, it's my life and it's my choice and literally just keep it at that. Mm -hmm. I think like the shorter the response, the better, and then just completely take the conversation in a different direction or completely walk away from the situation. Like... You know, mm-hmm. I just, I don't know. I'm just really not a good person to ask because I literally do not care if I hurt somebody's feelings. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm, I never, I'm never going to go out of my way to be rude to somebody or to be disrespectful. Um, like even little things, like I'll hold the door open for somebody at the store or whatever. Um, but if somebody is going to ask me a question, I'm going to answer honestly. And I don't care if it upsets them is what I mean that yeah, like yeah, yeah. it doesn't. So like, um, I'm just not concerned with what people think about me at all. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely situational. Like I, I explain to family members that I just don't have the desire. Mm-hmm. Or I just don't want to. Um, a lot of, a lot of family members don't keep going with it. And then I know some people just keep going <laughs> and I just have to tell them, like, I just don't want to. Okay. <laughs> I just don't have that desire. And that's not fair to my kid. Exactly. Again, nobody wants parents who didn't mm-hmm. want them. So, and I think it's not selfish because I am thinking about the kid. Mm-hmm. I think that most, that's the selfless thing to do mm-hmm. um, to take yourself out of the equation and think about your kid. Like, how would your kid feel? You know, that's trauma they had to live with the rest of their lives, knowing that their parents didn't want them or they had them out of obligation or Mm -hmm. whatever the reason. Yeah. And if it's a stranger, like, that's just rude. Just, like, don't even bother with them. Just be like, my body, my choice, and then walk away from them. If it's a stranger, be like, I have a penis, and just walk away. (laughs) Or, like, it's not, it's none of your business. Why are you even asking me? Who are you? I've never had a stranger ask me though. No, no. We were we were um, reading on Reddit before this, and a lot of people on Reddit have said like strangers just straight up say to them like, "Why don't you want to have kids?" and like make a remark about being selfish for not wanting kids. There were quite a few people on there with like that story, and. That's never happened to either one of us. Yeah. It's, I mean, I've had like... Maybe because we live in like a more, I would say, progressive culture compared to other states. I don't think it's even that. I think it are, we just live in such a small bubble. Mm. I can't even think of a lot. Other than today when we went to get lunch, what other times are you around strange? Well, you're front desk, though. So. Not anymore. Oh, not anymore? No, I haven't been for oh, like shoot. Then a year yeah, now. Like, 
How often are you around strangers? I'm not around strangers very often. Oh my God. Okay. So <laughs> I was doing, um, did I tell you I was doing um, a hiring event for my company? Mm-hmm. Um, and <laughs> this guy comes up and I was like, Hey, like we're hiring right now, like all different types of positions. Mm-hmm. And I was like, do you like working with kids? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, well, that makes one of us. <laughs> Why did you ask that? Um, you work with you don't work with kids. I don't. I asked him because like we have position because we have positions where you can work with kids and where oh, you don't. Okay. I was like, yeah, that makes one of us. That's why I work in HR with adults. <laughs> but we do have lots of positions working in the classroom with kids. You said that. <laughs> yeah. Everyone laughed, so it was fine. Oh, okay, that's good. I think I made an impression. I think it's just funny because you work. I don't know if you want me to say it, but, like, for the... In education? Yeah, in education. And you're like, I don't like working with kids. (laughs) (laughs) Gotta keep it Um, real. Yeah. But, yeah. I don't know how that's relevant. I don't know. My salon person... What are they called? Hairstylist? Hairstylist, yeah. (laughs) She asked, like, if we were having kids, and Mm. they said no. And what was her response? um, Oh, she was, like, fine. Like, she didn't care. But I think she's also, like, she works in customer service, essentially. Like She has gonna, to be polite. Yeah. She's not going to want to, like, diss me and then lose my business, you know? Why did she ask in the first place, though? Um. Oh, because she just got married, and then I was talking about our wedding, and then her, she was talking about, like, like they want to have kids, so she's like, do you guys have kids or want to have kids? And I said, no, we just have our dog, and she really loves dogs, and we were just, like, talking about dogs. <laughs> Love um, it. Yeah. So those, I guess there's times like that. Like my tattoo artist, she asked me for having kids. We were, um, because you know, my tattoos of Lincoln, Brandon. So right. she asked me the story behind that and asked if we were going to have kids. And I was like, no, my dog is basically my kid. And yeah, oh, let's talk about pets as kids. Okay. Air quotes. Yeah. Um, my dog is 1000% my child. And it hurts a little bit because he's very clearly an only child. And there is almost nothing I want more in this world than to have another dog. Because, oh my god, if I could have it my way, I'd have like three dogs. Mm -hmm. Like, I just love, love dogs. But he is very clearly an only child. It hurts, but I accept it. I don't know if I can have a dog after Link. Like, Are you serious? I think because I'm so attached to him. Maybe if we had, like, an overlapping dog, you know? Yeah. Maybe that would work better. Like, their transition would be better. Okay, get one. Get another dog now. (laughs) Oh, I don't know if I can have another dog right now. Um, Link is kind of an only child, though. He is. He's a brat. I was literally just thinking that. I was like, he's kind of a brat. Such a brat. Oh, my God. But I'm just so... Like, our lives really do revolve around Link. Mm -hmm. You know, the times we wake up, he has a specific dinner time. Like, we gotta, we make his food, so we don't, we have kibble, but uh, we make his dinner. And we have to make sure that we, like, uh, include it in our grocery when his food is running out. Then we gotta make sure we make it. Like, our lives really do revolve around Link. And the reason why I say, like, I don't know if I can have another dog, because it's just gonna... I already know it's going to hurt a lot when he dies and I'm going to like see his hair everywhere and like not want to sleep it up or like, you know? And so because I'm so attached to him and I know dogs don't live a long time, I think it's going to be hard to get another one and be hurt again because they don't live so long. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying like, I don't know if I can get another one. I'm the complete opposite in that department. Yeah. I will, like, never not have a dog. I am not emotionally strong. Like, I... Oh, neither am I. That's why I need a dog. <laughs> like, yeah. like, like, Duders literally saved my life. Like, like, if it wasn't for him and, like, having the responsibility to take care of him mm-hmm. and be his dog mommy, like, like, what other reason is there for me to be here? Yeah. I don't feel that way anymore. Just, like, at the time when I was going through a really hard time, I did. Yeah. Like, somebody said to me, like, like, if you would have done it, like, who would have been here to take care of this little guy? You know? And then, like, that just completely tore me down and broke me. Broke me. And, like, yeah. It's a good question. Yeah. Luckily, he's pretty resilient. He is. They, They found him twice. 
Or no, he was at um, SPCA twice. The first, oh, really? yeah, dude, the first time his owner died. And so oh. the family gave him to the shelter. And then the second time SPCA found him on the road, walking by himself on Fruit Ridge Road, which is in oh. South Sac and it's super dangerous. Yeah. By himself. A very busy street. Can you imagine my little baby? Duders, come here. We're talking about you. Come here. Do you want to come hang out with us? Here, let's take this off. This is kind of a dog podcast. Like he's it is. Cover. Come here. You hear come Link here. sometimes come here. in the background. Especially because we have hardwood floor, so you can hear his nails. His dill, his dill claws, but yeah, this little guy, like, he's my baby. He's my baby. But I do know, like, when he dies, I'll probably get another dog like within the month. Yeah. Because I need a dog. Yeah. But, um, yeah, he just, he's my pride and joy. Like, I love him so much. Like, he just brings me so much joy and happiness. Mm -hmm. And every day when I come home, he's always there to greet me. And he's so smiley and he's so wiggly. And he's just, he's a good boy. I think that's what makes dogs so perfect is that. Like, you don't have to, I don't know, with kids, you have to worry about the person that they become. I know. And at some point, they're just going to be who they are. Totally. You know what I mean? Like, like I don't see eye to eye to, with my mom at all in, like, religion and how I, like, my mom's very protective. Mm-hmm. Like, you, like, I'll, like, I brought my niece to the beach and, you know. Oh, after, really? When? Um, that one day we went to, uh, I went with Mikey and. And my mom and so we like, go get oysters or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't know she was there. Oh yeah, so she was there, and we brought her to the beach. And my mom just very. My mom's a germaphobe. This <laughs> pandemic has not been good to her. She is freaking out, you guys. And she's very, very protective. Very protective. Helicopter parent at its finest. And we went to the beach, and, like, at the beach, you go barefoot, so you could put your toes in the sand. Yeah. She didn't want her to take off her shoes because she's scared that she would step on something like a broken shell or, like, you know, something to scratch her feet up. And I'm, like, walking around barefoot, and I'm like, well, how about me? (laughs) I'm barefoot. What'd she say? She's like, eh. And then she was, like, just trying to take care of her. What did Mikey say? Um... I don't think he said anything. I think he was just like in his own world. <laughs> <laughs> what? That doesn't sound like Mikey at all. Uh, so we that doesn't sound like Eugene. Eugenie. Does anybody call him Eugene anymore? I think at work. Oh, really? Yeah, because that's his first name. Oh, what? I <laughs> so, thought his first name was Mikey. No, that's his nickname. Oh. Yeah. Wow. I really don't Mikey's know you not- at all. Like his legal, there's no paperwork that has his name <laughs> Mikey in it. That's just his nickname. That's so funny. No, so I think they call him Eugene at work. What was I getting at? <laughs> Our short term, short term memory is just the worst. Hey, at least I got an excuse. Oh, I was gonna ask you. So, how do you feel about people? Okay, so there's certain people in this world who don't like when people call their pets their kids. Fuck those people. Have you ever met any of those people? No, but I think that I just give off the general vibe that, like, if you say something that's going to piss me off, like, you will regret it. (laughs) Because I will, like, I'm not going to say, like, verbally assault you, but, like. You're going to say what you think. Totally. I'm extremely opinionated and, like, very direct. And, like, even the way that, like, I talk is just very, like, punchy. Assertive, mm-hmm. a little aggressive, mm-hmm. a little aggro, but yeah, like, so no, no one's ever said that to me. And I think that's because like, I'm just not like an approachable person to like, okay. you know what I mean? I guess. Yeah. So no, has anyone ever said that to you? No one's ever said it to me. Well, okay. So what people have said, I've had a coworker once think it's weird that Link sleeps in our bed um, or goes on our couch. Right, because there's people who don't let dogs on the couch and stuff like that. I can't even imagine. And no, but she was traumatized as a kid because a kid a dog attacked her. Okay, and she's got scars. Like she showed me her scar from. Yeah. 
So I, I get that. So she gets a she gets an excuse. She gets a little meh because uh, uh, trauma's trauma's real. Sure. Um, but I do have a coworker and he's a great guy. I really like him. So like, you know, I'm not trying to be like mean. I hear a butt. <laughs> but he, <laughs> uh, doesn't see animals as family members or as like, like he, what was it? His wife, I think has a cat. Somebody has a cat and he's like, it is the cat. It is an animal that lives in our house. You know, he, like he doesn't see them as a family member, like as a. It, it is an animal. I could not disagree more. Yeah, like Link is allowed on the couch. He sleeps on the couch. When we come home, he's on the couch <laughs> <laughs> waiting for us. So we don't treat him like that at all. Like he's not even in the crate. Like we did crate train him when he was a puppy. Obviously, because he chewed everything up and peed everywhere. <laughs> but as he got older and he was potty trained and all that, he is allowed to roam around the house and do whatever he wants around the house. I mean, not whatever he wants, but you know. I took my bed off of the bed frame and put my mattress on the floor because duders not, I mean, he he needed stairs to get up on the bed and he used the stairs to get up there, but he would never use the stairs to get down. He would just like super, Jump off. yeah, like Superman yeah, himself off of the bed. And I just knew like, he's getting older. He'll be 13 in January. Um, and I just knew that he was going to hurt himself. So I was yeah. like, Nope, I'm just going to put the mattress on the floor. And he loves it. That's so funny because we did the same. So our old bed was one of those Ikea beds that had the drawers underneath. Yeah. And so it was basically a double bed. It was so it was super high up. And so Link has arthritis on one of his paws. And he's also a corgi. So he's only got like short little legs and he's getting older. And so we had to change our bed frame. So that's why we have that, that lower bed frame mm. i don't know if you've seen it but it's like super it's low to the ground it's it's like this one but shorter oh, okay yeah so it's like a low profile metal bed frame so we literally changed our bed frame for, for him for linky yeah and we got a king size bed for him too because the full size bed was not doing it <laughs> <laughs> are you kidding a full size bed wouldn't even work for me and i sleep alone <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if I can go back to a smaller bed. Fuck like, no. Even if, like, I, Brandon and Link weren't there and I was just by myself, like, I love all the space. Fuck like, it yeah. It's good to, like, just sprawl out. Exactly, dude. Spread eagle that shit. Yeah, so I don't know if I can even go to a smaller bed anymore. All right. Anything else? I mean, in, con- in summation, it is totally okay to not want to have kids. And you should never do anything. I'm a firm believer in life. No one should ever do something that they truly don't want to do with the mm-hmm. exception of like having a job. Cause that's just part of life. Like you gotta have a job. You gotta yeah. go to work. Like, there's like a, there's a, a line between like lazy and you know, not doing something because you truly like shouldn't be doing it. Yeah. No one do um, it. and so, you know, no one should let anyone pressure them into doing something that they don't want to do. Mm-hmm. And, um, I think it's totally okay to not want to have kids, especially in today's environment and just how the world is collectively. But yeah. Yeah. I agree. Like slide, I slide into the DMs. Like, do you, how do you guys feel about kids? Do you guys want to have kids? Do you, are you kind of in the same boat as us where like you don't really want to have kids or yeah. Let us know. Yeah. I'm curious to know. I feel like I'm going to know the answer. Cause like some Cause our, my demographic, I think is our age Mm -hmm. around our age. So I think a lot of people just don't want kids. And I'm really glad that it's become a norm and that people are sharing that. Cause I think I used to like hide it. Well, you know, childless millennial, like that's a thing. Yeah. Like it's such a thing. (laughs) Like there, I think in, was it San Francisco? There are more millennials with dogs than there are millennials with kids. Love that. Or something like that. Oh, Finn. Oh, Finn. He's excited. But yeah. yeah, Don't feel bad. No. Don't, like, don't let anyone pressure you to have something as big of a job as, like, having kids. Like, that is not just 
buying a brand new car or buying like, you know, a house even. Yeah. Like, it is something that cannot be undone. Cause once you become a parent, you, you can't turn that off. Mm-mm. You know, you are a parent for life and you're not the most important thing in your life anymore. Your yeah. child is. So if that's something that you're okay with, that you're ready for, if that's something you want, you do you boo, mm-hmm. but I'm going to do me. Yeah. And I am not going to have kids. <laughs> yeah. And again, like not child haters, no. not parent haters. I have mad respect for all the good, like really good parents out there. I, like they, we need more of you guys. And I'm happy to know like there are good parents out there. And I love seeing that. I love seeing like happy children um, and supportive parents and parents who actually care and want to be a part of the kids' lives. Like, that's amazing. Yeah. And if you're not that person, if you don't have that desire and and you don't want to be a parent for the rest of your life, if that's not the thing you want, don't do it. If the, if the feeling is fleeting, mm-hmm. don't do it. Remember, you guys, halt. Are you hungry? Are you angry? Are you lonely? Are you tired? The answer is yes. Halt. And don't make any decisions. All right. Thanks for listening, you guys. It was fun to fun to be on here again. I just love doing these podcasts. So thank you for having me. Yeah. I love having you on. I Aww. love our conversations. Me too. I feel like there is so much more we could talk about this subject too. But I know. Why do I feel like we're missing something? Because I, oh, I, I just had it in my head what I wanted to talk about. Now it's gone. It's fleeing. It's fleeing. Fleeting. Fleeting. What did I say? Fleeing. Fleeing. <laughs> you, you missed the T. It's fleeting. Fleeting. Yeah. No, there's a lot of things to talk about, like parenthood, like what makes a great parent, what we think makes a great parent. I Maybe mean, we kind of touched on that. Yeah, that's true. Okay. How about this? What is one... We'll end it with this. Okay. As a former child... Mm-hmm. <laughs> As a former child star... <laughs> What is one thing, what is one advice you would want to give to all parents? Be present. Be an active participant in their life. Mm -hmm. Um, Be responsible. Do the right thing. Wait, did you say one thing? Because this is like five. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I was thinking of like one specific thing. Okay. Um, Like something that you would have wished you had, I guess. That's that good. all kids would would benefit from. Um. Oh, easy Nintendo sixty four. Okay. <laughs> That's relevant to children of all generations. Oh. Um. <laughs> I don't know. What is one thing like all parents should know? Okay, I'll I'll go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, then you. <laughs> Maybe I can build off of it. Okay. So the one thing I wish that all parents would do is, I'm trying to think of the right word. Oh, is to like listen to their kids when they talk about something they're interested in Mm, and be. Love that. And like figure out why they're interested in it. Show interest in their interests. Show interest in their interests. Exactly. Like, for example. You know, like, when I was a kid, I liked boyish things. Mm -hmm. But everyone always bought me dolls. And I hated dolls. I hated Barbies. I didn't like any of that. And I wish my parents took the time to figure out, like, what I'm interested in and what I liked. And to also be, like, show some interest. like And be supportive. Yeah. They don't have to like it. But just to understand, like, why do I like that thing? Yeah. You know? Like, I think... I love that. Yeah. Show interest in their interests. Yeah. Like, don't just... I don't know. Like, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Okay. Cool. Okay, so with that, did you think of something? No, I stand by what I said. Okay. Then we're good. (laughs) Wait, what did I say? It's like all the generic stuff. Be present. Do the right thing. Be responsible. Be responsible. Put themselves first. Always put have their best interest... Yeah. At heart. Remember that once you're a parent, you're a parent for life. There is no going back. Yeah. 
even when your kid is 18 and your adult, kid is 30 your kid is 50 they're always going to need you in some capacity be a parent and know that if you're going to become a parent that's what you need to be able to do, do. yeah well with that is this a wrap i think this is a wrap all right i love this good episode good, good episode, episode. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Talk talk to you soon. Thanks for making it to the end. If you enjoy what you hear and want to stay up to date on the show, please follow me on Facebook and or on Instagram. You can also check out my website at thetalkativeintrovertpodcast.com. All the information will be on there as well as in the show notes. If you want to help support the show, please review and rate the podcast and share it with your friends and family. Thanks so much, and I'll talk to you guys in the next episode.